want to welcome you to the United Way of Johnson and Washington County's Small Business United 365 or SBU 365 panel discussion. Now today we will focus on how being a partner with the United Way can help your business with branding, customer relations, employee recruitment, retention, and community involvement. My name is Barbara Thomas. And I'm the Executive Director of Alumni and Constituent Relations at the University of Iowa Tippy College of Business, and I will serve as your moderator today. Now, during today's webinar, our panelists will utilize this time to educate us and answer some of your questions. We will have one short breakout room where you'll be able to share your ideas as well as learn from others. And our event will be recorded and a link will be sent out afterwards from the United Way. So I have mentioned the United Way's new program, Small Business United 365 or SBU 365. Now we will highlight this in greater detail later, but in essence, what this is is an innovative program where small businesses can partner with the United Way for just $1 per day or $365 annually. So what does that get you? Well, your company gains visibility. You have a partner to turn to when organizing employee volunteer opportunities. And with that, you actually become an employer of choice. So today we're going to learn from several of our, our community's leading organizations about how their companies have benefited from community involvement. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to our panelists. Tim Schroeder is the president and principal architect with Newman Munson Architects. Tim has transformed Newman Munson into a state and regional design leader while simultaneously nurturing a progressive, purposeful, and human-centered practice. He joined Newman Munson Architects in 1994, was licensed in 1998, and became a principal and studio leader in 2000. Tim's projects have been recognized with both AIA Iowa and AIA Central States Region Awards. He's been instrumental in Iowa City's urban li living developments and served as an editor-in-chief of Iowa Architect Magazine. In 2008, Tim received the AIA National Young Architect Award and was named the firm's vice president. In 2020, uh, or no, Tim's dedication to the firm's design quality, staff engagements, and client satisfaction led him to being named president in 2018. And in 2020, he led the efforts for Newman Munson to become a just organization. Now, just organization is a program that companies use to measure and improve equity and employee well being. Specifically, the program assesses diversity and inclusion equality, employee health, employee benefits, and stewardship. Thanks to his efforts, Newman Munson is a leader in design and environmental stewardship and a community leader with an expanding positive impact. Our next panelist is Melinda Praterelli, the founder and CEO of Meld Marketing. Now, Melinda brings a unique business, marketing, and creative acumen to her work with local, regional, and national clients. She started her first company in 1999, and in 2016, she launched Meld along with a cloud technology company. Melinda has more than 20 years of expertise in branding, content creation, and creative direction with small to medium-sized companies, Fortune 500 companies, Ivy League universities, and everything in between. She believes that the best brands are developed and refined through collaboration, which is why she named the company Meld. Part of it is because of her first name, when you shorten it down to Mel, and the other part is the guiding vision to blend the ideas and expertise of an agency and its clients. Melinda was voted one of the Corridor Business Journal's most influential persons has, and has been featured as a speaker at Entree Fest. She began her career as a journalist with the New York Times Group in South Carolina, 
became a content specialist at Lawrence University and was named editorial director for an advertising agency before launching MELD. Melinda has worked on national brands, including Otis Spunkmeyer, Pierce Fire Trucks, Anchor Food Products, the University of Pennsylvania, and Kelowna Supernatural. She also has authored three books about entrepreneurial businesses and leaders and has contributed to the New York Times book, Circuits. She holds a BS in journalism from Iowa State University and then completed the University of Iowa Entrepreneurial Venture School. Our next panelist is Ryan Bell, the owner of Locals Love Us. Ryan's professional career started with sales and consulting work at a few larger companies. And then in 2010, the idea of expanding a word of mouth marketing platform presented an opportunity. He was in love with the idea and his wife, Colleen, was able to continue her career in financial services doing remote work, which at that time was before the norm. Having moved their young family several times and helping get the concept started in Louisiana, Texas, and the Quad Cities, they are now very happy to claim Iowa City as their forever home. Ryan is a past campaign chairperson for the United Way's annual campaign and has been an instrumental player in the Rotary Kerber Heart Safe Community Campaign, which provides discounted AED units to area businesses. He serves on the board of the Iowa City Noon Rotary Club and as president-elect is slated to take over leadership of this large club in July of 2022. And finally, our last panelist is Jason Glass, who is a lecturer at the University of Iowa's Tippie College of Business, where he has been teaching undergraduate and MBA courses in human resources, leadership, organizational behavior and entrepreneurship for the past three years. Jason is also a past adjunct faculty member at Cornell College. His teaching career follows a 20 year career in human resource roles for several Eastern Iowa companies, the last seven of which were at the executive level. He has experience in multiple business environments, including nonprofit, manufacturing, sales, and union environments. Jason is the current chair of the Iowa City Human Rights Commission, past Iowa Human Rights Board member, treasurer for the Iowa Society of Human Resources Management, SHRM, as it is called, their council, and a past SHRM chapter president. He is also a 28-year member of the National Guard, and thank you for your service, Jason. He has, held, he has both a Bachelor of Business Administration and an MBA from the University of Iowa's Tippy College of Business, both with an emphasis in management and organizations. And so with that, we will start to talk about the content at hand. But before we get into that discussion, we want to take a quick poll to hear from you about what your businesses are currently viewing as your business biggest challenges. So my partner in crime, Trisha, will launch this poll. And so watch the screen and please answer this question. What is your businesses, what, what are, is your business currently viewing as your biggest challenge? Is it finding skilled employees, retaining employees, marketing your business, or attracting new customers? Now, while you do that poll, I do want to remind you that through the course of this discussion today, you can feel free to use the chat at the bottom of your screen to enter any of your questions. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can. Um, no promises that we can get to them all, but Trisha will help us kind of get through that. So I'm going to give you one more second to answer that and then ask um, Trisha to share with us what those results are. So it looks like it's almost, it is an even tie between finding skilled employees and attracting new customers. Hmm, that gives us an idea. We probably have a bunch of marketing people in here and a bunch of human resources people in here. So, um, 
interesting ideas. Well, our goal today is hopefully to give you a few ideas and to help you as you face your small business struggles. So we all know that research shows that businesses with strong charitable partnerships can attract more well-rounded and qualified team members. However, we hear a lot about the great resignation and employees reevaluating what they are doing for a living. So first, Jason, I'd like to go to you with a question about employee recruitment, which, as you can tell, is a top priority for our audience. How has recruitment changed over the past few years? And can you address why we're experiencing such a tight labor market? Sure, and thanks for the first question and welcome everybody. Um, I, I think it's, it's interesting with the, the whole great resignation thing. I think you know, obviously COVID has changed a lot of uh, the, the work environment. So that kind of goes without saying, uh, and that has many different you know, kind of tentacles to it as well. So you talk about there and we're, what we're experiencing now is certainly a labor shortage. So we, you know, we've, in, in, in my 20, almost 25 years in the workforce, uh, this is by far the, the greatest leverage that I think we've seen from the employee side of things, both, both individually and collectively, which is why we're seeing things like work stoppages and those kind of things at a larger scale, much, you know, in much greater numbers than I think we had in for, for several years, because I think you know, employees are realizing that the, the ball's in their court and they have a lot more leverage. And there's a lot of causes for that, obviously, things like uh, and we, we use, a lot of these are COVID related. So our, uh, we've had a lot less immigration in the last few years. Uh, the availability of childcare is a big factor in that, you know, or the, or the lack thereof. Um, more supports for people that are, uh, that are out of work. Uh, but whatever the causes, and those aren't things we can solve on this webinar, but whatever the causes are, it's a, it's a reality. Uh, and it's a reality for businesses that we know that there's, there's scarcity with, with a workforce, which means it's, it's even more critical, you know, than it ever has been about differentiating yourself as, you know, as an employer that people want to work for. And we're seeing more and more, especially with younger generations, which are going to become the, the bulk of our workforce over the next few years, that social responsibility, uh, the ability to connect with an employer who, who supports their volunteering and their community involvement is becoming a much greater factor in the employer that they choose to join and stay with. Great. Thank you so much. Now, Melinda, I know that your company has kind of adapted nimbly to some of the challenges in the workforce since the pandemic. Can you address how your employee recruitment has changed and how can a business stand out to prospective employees? Absolutely. Uh, thank you also. And hello to everyone. I see a lot of familiar faces, so it's great. Um, I'll try to keep this uh, fairly short but we did uh, go fully remote in October. Um, and we spent almost two years uh, sort of planning that and testing out different things. But one key aspect of that is the recruitment aspect um, and company culture, because that's what it comes down to, right? Um, and so trying to figure out ways that we would not lose that, that, that we could uh, translate that not only within our own team and to our clients, but in the recruiting process, as you said. And so one, a couple of things that were very uh, specific is that it allowed us to recruit from a much wider audience, right? Because we, um, we were able to say, I can go out and look at the connections I've had nationwide. Um, we can also, you know, get out on Indeed and say, you know, you don't have to live right here. We'd love it if you did live right here, right? But you don't have to. Um, and then really, uh, I think some of the key messaging, right? Because I think a lot of this, we're doing a lot of marketing for people right now that's about hiring because we all know that's, and, and um, so one of the things that we were able to do is talk a little bit about having the flexibility to work from anywhere throughout the year, spending less time commuting, right? Spending more time being creative, uh, working with a strong team that values collaboration and great work. And um, having gone remote, we haven't lost our ability, you know, that this is part of our messaging because it's true to be personalized and customized as a team and also with the way we interact with our clients. And that was a big thing that we had to work through beforehand. And we felt confident and that we could stand behind that to the people that we recruited to say, this is, you know, how we're going to adapt that. And what I mean by that, obviously, is water cooler time and project alignment time, right? Um, you know, so it, making sure that we didn't forget that and trying to have some celebrations and events um, and figuring out how to be creative to do that. But ultimately, 
that resulted in us uh, getting 107 resumes on the last um, thing we put out. And we always get a lot of resumes, but this was there were a lot more qualified candidates because I think we had a bigger pool to go to, to go after. So that is what I would say. Great. Thank you so much. Now, we know the culture of your business, you just talked about that, is a concept that has become more and more important over the years. We know that there is value in recognition, good communication, and flexibility. But younger workers, such as those who recently graduated from college, want to be passionate about where they work, and many employees place high value on social responsibility. So one way to bring passion to your business culture is to provide your employees with community involvement opportunities. So Tim, I'd like to go to you um, to discuss how your commitment, your company's commitment to community involvement, how you feel that has enhanced your business um, and, and your, the life of your employees. Thanks for having me here today. Hello, everyone. And to provide some context, we really elevated our commitment to volunteerism in 2017 as we celebrated our 40th anniversary. And that began as you know, organizing 40 group volunteer activities. And it ended up being many more. But afterward, in 2018, we, we formalized that commitment by creating a policy where we were encouraging every employee to annually take 24 office hours with pay and dedicate those to community volunteer efforts, ideally group volunteer efforts. So we also have a similar policy for professional volunteers, but um, you know, hopefully more of those opportunities, in-person opportunities are on the horizon after two years of a pandemic. But as you mentioned, we, we've seen this growing passion amongst our staff for social responsibility, and the sense of purpose this volunteering creates is well worth it as we've seen it increase workplace pride, engagement, and even productivity as that sense of purpose reflects into the work that we do. And, you know, we're not alone, our, our competition, other architecture firms and other businesses all over the area have similar commitments and, and beyond the benefits to the community and that internal culture that it fosters, it's, it's something we need to do not only to retain, but to recruit talent. Excellent. Are there other panelists? Um, Melinda, I know that your company did a great program at the end of the calendar year where you supported their giving interests. Would you like to just highlight that? Absolutely. Um, I think that's one thing that, you know, is so important to us, just as it is for Newman Munson, is that one of the reasons I wanted to have a company is so that we can have an impact. It's not just about marketing. And the people that we recruit, um, you know, that is one of our core um, elements. And so, and I know that that is, and, and I think it's very fortunate that, you know, when you take the time like Tim's group has done to look at what is authentic to who you are and to your brand and what you can do, um, and so for us, one of the things we talked about as we made this shift to remote was how do we make sure we don't lose that? And one way of doing that is at the end of the year, we ask each of our team members to designate a nonprofit that means something to them. And then we donate in their name. And then we take the next step, which is to try to help that nonprofit by putting something on our platforms and tagging them so that they can then engage. Because some of the gift that we give is marketing, you know, having something like nonprofits tell us that all the time, we have great content, we don't have, you know, we don't understand how to share, we don't, you know, we don't, we don't all of that. So I think um, it just brings all of us a lot of joy to be quite honest, just that picking things together, um, sharing why, right, and then being able to share it with uh, the public in, in that way. Those pretty, are pretty fun. phenomenal examples, you know, it's so great to hear about a company that's providing their employees with that time on the clock, if you will, yeah. to devote to volunteerism. So kudos to Newman Munson for that. And then to Meld as well, um, because I think we all need to remember that as we support nonprofits, 
uh, publicly stating so on our own personal and company platforms is so beneficial to those nonprofits. And it also makes us as an organization look so positive because we're giving back. So just great points to kind of remember. Now, when I think about community volunteerism, one of the people I think about a lot is Mr. Ryan Bell. So Ryan, could you just kind of highlight, you're very active in the community. Can you highlight how you feel community involvement has helped you and your business? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And happy to be here. This is really cool. So community involvement uh, to me is everything for I come from a little bit of a different perspective and maybe there are others on here that I run a very small business um, with no employees. Um, but I devote a lot of time as Barb alluded to, to different nonprofits and more different passions um, because it's only me, I can make the decisions as to what I support. Uh, but I also use my Locals Love Us platform to poll the community on who they feel are the best nonprofits and then give a cash prize to the winner, kind of make it a fun um, element uh, to their fundraising, uh, you know, year, the things that nonprofits are always working on um, and then do some free advertising packages for all the others in the top five. So I've kind of made, and using my platform, I think, uh, the best way for businesses to give back to the community is to use what they're good at. You know, if you've got a lot of employees, that's your, you know, you've got the person power to help fuel United Way um, activities, which is huge. That's what a lot of it's all about. Um, if you're a one man or a one woman show like I am, um, you know, you can find other ways to give. It might not be through a lot of uh, financial uh, giving, but there are tons of volunteerism opportunities um, that will appeal to you and your employees um, that, you know, exactly what Melinda did, that will build your culture to where they love it, where they work. They love the, you know, the way they feel when they plant trees or when they, you know, go help build crisis center, um, you know, goodie bags or supply bags. Um, so there's just a ton of ways. And for me, United Way kind of brings that all together. And that's why I've been involved uh, throughout the years of, of being here in Iowa City is United Way is a conduit to a lot of different things, a lot of different nonprofits and a lot of different opportunities. So they're excellent to be aligned with. Great. Thanks so much, Ryan. So next, we're going to explore um, the benefits that employees get from actually spending time together doing volunteer activities. So to explore options on what kind of volunteer activities companies have taken together, we are actually going to break out into different Zoom rooms to discuss. So each of the rooms will have one of our panelists and we'll ask our panelists to share some of those ideas when we come back. You'll get an alert when it's time to come back. Um, but in the meantime, what I wanna encourage you to do is watch your screen and please click to join one of the Zoom breakout rooms. Well, welcome back everyone. I can always tell there's a good discussion happening in a breakout room when it kind of takes people a long time to come back when they're like, well, wait, 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 wait. I have one more point I wanna make, so. Meeting is being recorded. That is always, always a good sign. So thank you for participating in that. And I hope that those discussions gave you some good ideas. So what I'd like to do is just briefly hear from some of our panelists about what are some of the ideas that you did learn. So first, I'm going to go to Tim. Tim, do you have anything to share? Yes, lots of them. I hope I can do them justice. So I'll just rattle right through them, uh, picking apples and donating them. Uh, there's a program, April Showers. I think it's gifts for newborn children. Got that right. Um, an organization gives a dollar sum to each of their employees to donate to an organization of their choice each year. 
blood drives, popular one, you can have a mobile unit come to you. Um, one organization uh, creates somewhat of a gift shop, but it's a gift shop to give those who can't afford to buy gifts the opportunity to gift gifts to others. And um, also has a, a program to set up uh, donating to a scholarship fund for those who can't afford uh, ongoing education. Uh, she's very generous though, and she recommended setting a cap um, on your donations so you don't give more, you know, so you don't feel like a, a booger when you have to say no to somebody. Um, and then, you know, just other programs like that. But, uh, that was that's great. Uh, how about you, Melinda? Ideas? Yeah. So we had a sizable group. And one of the points that came out was about being, you know, large versus small matters, right? And how you approach these things. I thought that was great. And a number of people on our call um, have aligned with the business partnership, um, which used to be the, the chamber, right? Um, and have done a lot of things through that. Other people talked about the United Way itself. Um, and then uh, someone mentioned South I think it was, I could be wrong on this, so we're going to see if Kelsey corrects me, but the South or Southeast District Neighborhood Association and political campaigns and PTO and other things like that. Um, and we had someone talk about uh, the Salvation Army, um, Adopt a Family, and that is a great program. And so, yeah, a lot of, lot of good ideas in the group, uh, but just some pointing out that if you're a larger group, you might be able, a larger company, you might be able to mobilize right? More people, or you need to find just your place to volunteer and to make an impact individually if you're smaller. Oh, that's excellent. How about you, Jason? Any thoughts from your group? Yeah, a couple. So we had a couple of examples of uh, getting a, a team together to help with a Habitat for Humanity build, uh, for instance. Uh, and so, and, uh, and one other person mentioned uh, a team for Bowl for Kids Sake, you know, through uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters. So uh, to me, what it highlighted is the kind of the, the double benefit that you get. So not only of uh, participating, you know, in, you know, in the community and helping a, a good cause, but also the team building aspect within your organization. So I know with those habitat builds, you know, that, you know, there was, uh, yeah, those are, those are kind of activities you might pay for <laughs> in some cases to get, to send people to, 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 to build, build team camaraderie and, and engagement, but you're doing it in a way that's, that's supporting the community. So I thought that was a, a great point that it can, it can serve both those purposes. And also I think demonstrates that the power of a, a company like United Way, especially for small businesses where you may have a smaller number of employees, that that's, that's an organization that you can take advantage of their infrastructure and their connections to find those kind of things. So you can send a small team to be a part of a larger organization where you may not have maybe had the, the bandwidth to, to do something you know, on a larger scale. Oh, that's great. How about you, Ryan, any ideas? Yeah, we had a great discussion and I'll just follow up right on what Jason just said. Uh, Jamie, who works with MELD out of Philadelphia, um, one of their remote um, success stories, but she, you know, she made a great point. Every time you donate your time to any organization, you learn a whole lot about kind of the behind the scenes approach to how they pull off, say, a Meals on Wheels uh, campaign or you know, giving groceries to underserved communities. And it's just, you know, it's always eye-opening. You, you definitely come away feeling good about what you did, but you also learn, you know, a lot about how your community truly works. Um, so I thought that was a really good point. Um, we had Chandler who works at Horizons, which is a, a great nonprofit. They uh, help orchestrate a lot of the Meals on Wheels delivery here in Johnson County. Um, and then Kelly Forkenbrook, who works at the uh, North Liberty Community Library, and I've gotten to know her uh, through the last several months, but they do a ton of community give back and really just offering up their, um, their services to anybody in the Johnson County area. Um, there's office space you can secure if you need a quiet little office space for you know one man business like mine I, i'll look to take her up on that and just a lot of other community engagement that goes on through the north liberty library 
Um, and then Erica joined us. Um, I'm looking forward to hear more about what she's got going on, but she works for Bravo Roof Tile which makes roofing materials out of recycled plastics, which I think we could all applaud. Um, and their company is looking for just what we uh, are offering here, are different ways they can get engaged with the community and uh, kind of build that community or that company culture uh, through those efforts. So great discussion. Oh, that's wonderful. Lots of great ideas there. And I do want to remind you, and I think uh, Tricia just put it into the chat, is that the United Way's website, if you click on that volunteer button, you go to this menu. It is literally pages upon pages upon pages of volunteer opportunities for you. Whether you are looking for your own personal volunteerism opportunity or something on a larger scale, I highly recommend that. Um, please take a look at that. So next, we're going to talk a little bit about marketing and brand loyalty. And we've heard a lot that cause-based brand loyalty is kind of a, you know, it's, it's taken a lot more attention in the area of marketing. Most of the time, if a company gets involved in what customers perceive as a worthy cause, that it may attract someone to become a new customer. So Melinda, I'm going to turn to you. You're our marketing expert. Can you highlight how participating in nonprofit partnerships may open up ways for a company to reach new demographics that are otherwise unreachable through normal marketing means? Absolutely. Um, this is one of my favorite topics. So thank you for asking me to speak about it. Um, I think we've just had a great conversation starter already that's been diving into why this is so important for companies' cultures, for, you know, how they're messaging, what they're doing too, so that other people know it. But I would definitely say that participating in nonprofit partnerships opens up new ways. Um, we see it every day at Meld. We watch other companies because we go in and out of other companies all the time. And typically this conversation is part of what we're talking about with their overall you know, who are they? What do they value? And, um, you know, some of that has to do with your core products and services, and some of it has to do with this. And so how does that become part of something that you live throughout your entire brand, right? Your company culture all the way through. Um, so, you know, people have written entire dissertations about this. And so obviously, I'm going to try and <laughs> pare this down to a, a much smaller snippet of that. But you know, we know that being connected to the community is so important. It's always, you know, we, we can look back historically even and say, you know, even, uh, you know, before the changes of remote and all these things, serving a free lunch, doing some of the things that all of you were listing, being on boards, those are all the types of things that we know have been important. And now what I'm seeing so much of and what is so actually quite fun and exciting to be part of is the idea that you can move this culture online, but that you can also use it as a great way um, to have conversations with your teams, with your you know, company, because people love to engage in this, right? This is a very um, uh, two-way, you know, great way to engage, to ask people. Um, so we see with our team that they get very excited when we talk about what might this look like for MELD, or when I talk with other companies about what does this look like for you? So a lot of people... Um, it's kind of like uh, hasn't been always a part of their core marketing. They haven't thought about it that way, right? Because that seems very coarse and that's not what we're really trying to say. We're really trying to say it's a basic pillar. So how do you bring it through? Um, statistics show us that 87% of consumers are willing to buy a product or service from a company because that company supports a cause that is important to them, right? So to me, this is just a win all the way across. It's a win for your employees. It's a win for uh, your brand expression and um, existing customers and new customers, right? Um, and so as we talk about that, it's significant and something that companies have to be cognizant of as they're building their marketing plans and determining where their impact or community mission really fits within their culture, right? Um, so in other words, purpose-driven marketing has to be authentic and aligned with your brand. And it's one of the things that I would say uh, is something that every company like should be able to do a step back on. You know, it's a perfect thing to do as a group to say, let's spend time discussing this. Let's dig deeper. Um, but I think the first thing is, how do you define purpose-driven or cause, you know, cause marketing? So a few things, high level. One, transactional campaigns. I think we've all talked about a corporate donation that's triggered by a consumer's action right? That's one way of thinking about it. 
Um, another way is point of sale campaigns, such as a donation solicited by a company at the point of sale, but made by the consumer. You know, would you like to increase by a dollar? We've all seen that, right? To donate towards X. Um, message focused campaigns. Business resources are used to share a cause focused message. For example, a campaign that encourages behavior change drives awareness about an important cause or encourages consumer action, right? And so we know there's a lot of things um, that you can do. And all I'm, the reason why I'm bringing all these up is that depending on the type of business that you have, you know, one might make more sense than the other. Um, a portion of purchase, such as businesses donating a portion of their sales to a nonprofit or cause. And then the buy one, give one. Businesses will donate a product with comparable value to a designated product base which I really wanted to talk about with Tom's because Tom's was one of the original creators of that concept, right? Um, and they had great success with it to start because it, it is exactly that. It aligned with their mission, it aligned with their product, and it aligned with what they, what people uh, wanted, they wanted to buy something, right? That meant more than just the shoes they got. Um, over time, they had to adapt that campaign, right? But they still have their impact campaign. And then uh, volunteerism, of course, rather than asking for a donation, businesses will ask if customers will volunteer their time, which is what Tim was talking about. And then digital engagement, businesses creating a digital experience using social and um, to spread the awareness and raise funds, which is what we were just talking about. That's one of the things that we like to do at Mel. Um, and so just to say, uh, you know, it used to be you talk about the four Ps, product, price, place, promotion. Now, a lot of companies are talking about, you know, people, planet, purpose, profits, right? And so you think about Patagonia and Patagonia is absolutely the gold standard of thinking about a company that from the very beginning thought about how are they going to have a purpose driven philosophy? Um, so we know, you know, that they score uh, in the top spot in index score, right? Now we're all, we're small businesses. We're medium businesses. We're not, we're not going to reach the heights of Patagonia necessarily, right? But that's just to show you the spectrum of where it can take you depending on where it, um, you know, the intentionality you give it or the, or the rationale, like, does it make sense? Where does it make sense? Um, and so I would say what that's looked like for us, right? Um, it looked for us, it has looked like we use our platforms and promotion expertise to highlight nonprofits and underrepresented leaders in the community. We give away marketing support to nonprofits as part of our contest. We just did that. Um, we ask each of our employees to name a nonprofit as we talked about. We post about those um, and we give them visibility and we try to give them as many pointers behind the scenes as we possibly can um, about how to maximize that. We give deep discounts to nonprofits and we work with a lot of nonprofits um, in that manner. Um, and I don't know who said this earlier, but I loved it because it was so true. The, the blessing from that is we get to actually interact with these amazing people who work for nonprofits mm -hmm. and who are doing great things in our community. Right. Um, and so I would just say that, you know, um, creativity though, creativity is the other part of this. Embrace it as something that, you know, you can envision together. Right. And, uh, yeah. Oh, so great that's, insights, that's it. Melinda. So uh, Tim, I want to jump to you. Um, can you give a perspective of how Newman Munson has benefited both with your clients, you know, on that outward facing side, but also the benefits that you have seen internally with your employees um, when you have done those volunteer um, activities? How has it benefited you both internally and externally? The group activities in particular, they, uh, they, that uh, an individual, for example, that is doing volunteerism can expand their network of relationships and they can learn and contribute to the community. A team, however, can make a more tangible impact in just a, a shorter amount of time. Also members of that team uh, can set aside maybe their title or their work-life role and, and deepen relationships with their, their coworkers as they collaborate alongside each other toward goal. Beyond that, it, it, you know, the, the team comes away with this shared pride in this shared experience that strengthens their bonds in, in a meaningful way and a lasting way. But as far as the relationship with United Way, that 
as an organization that started in 2008 and we've since crossed paths with many other businesses across our community that are also tied to the United Way. We're, we're thankful for this, but many of them are also repeat clients. So I'll let you do the math in simple terms and there's not a negative correlation there to be found. Excellent. Excellent. So Jason, I want to just jump to you for a little bit of information about how community involvement can actually decrease employee turnover. Do you have any information to share with us on that? Yeah, well, and, and this ties to Melinda's point. She talked about from the customer perspective and, so, and that stat about how much, you know, customer loyalty. Well, we see the same thing on the employee the employment side. In fact, that and most of these stats are in the article that uh, was linked in the chat as well. So you can get at this. So I'm an analytics guy. And so if you need some, some data or some business case for why, you know, what we're seeing anecdotally uh, is that one, one study showed that there was a 50% a 57% reduction in turnover amongst the group of employees who felt there was a strong connection between their employer and their volunteer activities. So, and we all know the cost of turnover. And so a 57% reduction is pretty huge. Uh, there's also a, uh, about 70% of all employees say that they would, they would be more loyal to a company that helps them support uh, the community and social responsibility. So that's 70% of all employees, that number jumps to 83% amongst millennials which are gonna be the majority of our workforce in the next couple of years. So that's huge. And then Generation Z, which is the, 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 the group of people entering the workforce as we speak. So those, you know, those new college grads and your kind of 20 somethings, uh, that's gonna make up about probably 30% of our workforce in a few years. Uh, that's the first generation that, that in studies has shown that they prioritize social responsibility over salary as far as terms of the hierarchy of priorities they have in, in, in accepting a position and what and what company to accept it with. So in fact, in 64% uh, of millennials, which is that larger group, uh, won't say so they won't take a job if they don't feel that they that that company is strong in corporate you know, in corporate social responsibility. So there are there's real data and stats that means you know higher uh, higher retention, lower turnover. And I see it anecdotally. I, I teach undergrads now and I increasingly at, when I ask questions about what are you guys looking for in terms of employers, I hear consistently that one of the first things they look for is what's that company's mission? What, what's their involvement in the community? And, and can I feel good about the purpose of what I'm doing? Uh, and I hear much less about what I'm looking for the highest offer. Oh, that's excellent. So thank you. Great information here. And we have like, you know, what I love about this discussion, there's so many pieces and so much to, to discuss. Now, you will see that in the chat, um, if you want to connect with any of our panelists who are experts in their area, please reach out to the United Way so that they can do an introduction if you want to learn more from any of them. Um, one thing I do want to highlight is that for small businesses, there are ways to partner with the United Way that may be a little bit out of the box. And it's not always about volunteering. It's not always about financially contributing. But here's a great example from our community. And it has to do with um, Woofables, which is one of our lovely small businesses in town. And so recently the United Way partnered with Whiffables Gourmet Dog Bakery. So for every United Way branded dog treat sold, Whiffables donated a certain percentage back to the United Way. So by thinking outside of the box like this, both Whiffables and the United Way benefited from this. Whiffables gained great visibility through all of the social media promotions and other promotions that the United Way ran. And dog lo lovers, in turn, also were able to support the United Way. So we want to encourage any of the small businesses out there to think outside the box. How might you be involved? How might your company be able to give back? Now, the next submitted question actually um, hit home for me. One of the participants asked, what are some immediately actionable things I can do as a person who loves and supports small businesses, but works for a large enterprise? Is there a way I can leverage my position in my company to help you? Well, for me, exact, as an example, I am one of thousands of employees at the University of Iowa, like Jason, who is a coworker of mine. 
And I know that I have a strong network, both within my workplace and within my community. And small businesses benefit greatly from positive word of mouth. And so for me personally, when I experience great customer service or a great product, I like to tell others about it. So even small gestures like sharing that information about Woofables United Way dog treats on your Facebook page actually can help the small business and can help the charity. And I think sometimes we as individuals think that we don't have as much influence as we have, but we do. We all have friends, we all have associates, whether work or social or in, you know, outside in the community. And so the more that we can share positive stories about uh, small businesses, about volunteer activities, about ways to give back, all of that can help our community become an even stronger organization. Now, large organizations can turn to the United Way as a partner in their larger volunteer efforts and small organizations can do that as well. On the large size, a great example is the University of Iowa Center for Advancement. Um, they turn to the United Way to help coordinate volunteer activities during the United Way campaign. And their employees put together literacy kits and that helped bring those employees together, helped build community and it also helped the United Way. But just like that, small businesses are doing the same things. You know, if you're a one man shop like Ryan or if you have 10 or 40 employees, there are ways for you to get involved with the United Way that can help build community among your employees help our community and help you attract other workers. So briefly, um, we are kind of, we have a few more minutes. I just wanna ask each of our panelists very briefly, if you can say in one to two sentences, why you have been attracted to partner with the United Way and the value that you've received from that. So first, I'm gonna to go to Tim for that answer, Tim. I guess the holistic way of the United Way nourishes the community, basically. Bring people, agencies, government, and uh, you know, community groups, bring all of those together to help friends, family members, and neighbors. And, so, and all the while they're researching how those trends are shifting and adjusting course to make sure they're, they're being as effective as possible. So that's what we value in, in what they do. The benefits, uh, you know, from the relationships I mentioned a lot of that earlier, as well as the benefit to the employees. It, it's it just goes on and on. So it's a win-win-win. Excellent. How about you, Melinda? I would say it's been a phenomenal way for our team to actually get involved hands-on with the United Way to support them in the marketing, but also in the discussions about. What, how could they work with small businesses, right? And, and they do it so well already. And it's like these kind of conversations are so great for us to get to be part of in that. So we're supporting, uh, you know, the campaign and the United Way, but United Way is supporting us because um, they're giving our, they're just adding that emotional attachment that I was talking about that's so important for our team that we really value. Um, so it's an integration of what we do, but with this amazing nonprofit. That's excellent. How about you, Ryan? You're a committed just, United Way supporter. <laughs> I am, and I will be forever. Uh, first reason is Trisha Smith, who's been quite quiet on this call, but she is a rock star in our community and leader for every year's campaign. Um, and, uh, you know, I would follow her into the depths of hell if I needed to, because <laughs> she's just <laughs> that great. Um, and uh, creative too. She will come up with ways for each and every company to get value out of this partnership. Um, but really organically just casting a big net. It's a, a um, great way to sort of have an umbrella over a lot of different needs that Johnson County residents have. Uh, so United Way really captures that for me. Exactly. How about you, Jason? Uh, well, I, I might say something similar, but I, I 
I'm all about like problem solving. And one of the word that comes to mind for me is like that are really powerful is elegant solutions. I like the word elegant, which to me means both simple yet powerful. Uh, and I think United Way is a, is a great example of that because it's plug and play. So it's a way for an organization to really, you know, you can engage with, you know, with United Way and then have this, the power of that organization and all of the, the nonprofits that they work with and serve throughout the community. So it's a great way to, if, if you're looking for a way to start or, or, or it seems overwhelming uh, to deal with some of these, you know, these big issues we've been talking about on here, it's a, it's a, it's a simple, powerful way to get, just to get immediately involved and, uh, and have uh, immediate impact on both your organization and the community. Well, Jason, that is a perfect lead in because simple and powerful is exactly how I would describe the Small Business United 365 program. And so just to wrap this up, it is a group of local small business owners who are committed to investing in ongoing, impactful, and meaningful work through the United Way. It is simple. Your business can participate for a dollar a day. $365, but then you, your business actually gains a lot in the, um, as a partner in this. You get a spotlight in social media channels. You have the opportunity for your employees to volunteer. You'll be featured in various marketing spots, radio spots. You'll be listed on the homepage of the United Way of Johnson and Washington counties and in their annual report. You'll be invited to various events and you will know that you are a philanthropic leader in our counties. So we want to encourage you to visit the website for this, www.unitedwayjwc, to learn more about SBU 365. The, the United Way is very excited to share that they already have interest from local small businesses to partner on this, including Newman Munson, MELD, Locals Love Us, True Art Color Graphics, United Iowa Financial, and World of Bikes. And so please take, a, take advantage of this opportunity to connect your business with the United Way. So in wrapping up, I wanna thank all of our panelists today for taking the time to participate in this. And a special thanks to Big Grow for offering a discounted lunch for all attendees. They are a great United Way partner. So for our participants, we want to thank you for joining us today and for submitting your questions. We know that the landscape of our business community, and especially for small businesses, has been in extreme flux, in part due to the pandemic. But the positive impact small businesses hold in our community is extremely important and an invaluable asset for us. Now, none of this would be possible without the sponsorship of Newman Munson Architects and Meld Marketing. So thanks to both organizations for sponsoring our program today. And a final reminder to you all that today's program has been recorded and a link will be sent to you as well in several days. So thanks to all for participating. Hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, let's hope we don't get too much snow or too much cold in the next few weeks. Just remember, spring is coming. So thanks to everyone and make sure you visit that United Way website. Thanks so much.